Girls rule. Bruls rules. Bruls rules. Girls rules. Girls rules, not Bruls rules. Dr. Steve Brule. That's how you want to start this episode? Just making, like, you know, an esoteric reference? How do you know if the milk's expired? Check the expiration date, dummy. All right, listen. Yeah. Amer- I'm not happy with this. American Pie presents <laughs> Girls Rule. We wa- I- When did you watch it? Uh, last night. All right. Welcome. Night, a well, very long day. Welcome to the franchise. Um, this is a bonus episode. As you know, longtime listeners, um, if this is your first episode, listen to a different one. Uh, but longtime <laughs> listeners, I want to say that when we cover a franchise on this show, we do not let it fall by the wayside. Yeah. We continue to cover it. Into the ground. We really, really, really do. Yeah. And so it's, today... It's not always fun. It's not always a fun part of the show. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes it's fun. This was a fun time for me. Okay. Okay. I've, I've had worse. Uh, I mean, sure. I... Yes. Sure. Yes. I, hope I didn't have to another go... Terminator movie. I didn't have to go to the theater. I mean, that would have been... I I don't think we'll ever have to go to the theater for an American Pie movie again. I don't know. You never know. Uh, 2,000 and... uh, I just got a text, Henry. Uh, You know, I'm moving. And uh, so I'm getting texts from all these people who want to look at the apartment. Okay. I mean... This, this is what he's texting me as we're talking right now. This is the first text. Hey, Dan. And he sent this all at 839. These are five different texts I just got from the same person. Oh, no. <laughs> Sounds like a winner. Text one. Hey, Daniel, how are you doing? How are you doing? I'm interested <laughs> in viewing one of your rooms. Text two. Your colleague told me to text you. I don't know who this colleague is. <laughs> Text three, my name is Josh. Text four, I believe the apartment is in Brooklyn, New York. Text five, it was posted for 900. Motherfucker, send that in one text. I have things to do in my life. (laughs) That's, That's five separate texts. I feel like texting him back just, that was five separate texts. You're out. Please text my colleague, whoever that may yeah, be. Right there, you go. Text, please text my colleague five times, and then we'll we'll, we'll think about it. Wow, All that's right. a, that's a easily a, a one sentence, let alone one text. Five wow. texts. I hate these people with the short, many short texts. It's annoying. It's annoying. Just send me a text, then. I'll respond to your text, then you send me another text. That's how it should work. I don't know when it ends. Once I have four short texts, how many more are there? (laughs) Right, you don't know when you're supposed to respond. Like, you start responding and they're still coming. Yeah. I wouldn't respond yet. You might get six, seven, and eight. What, I have to I have to sit and stare at my phone just so I know when the little dots stop blinking? Yeah, yeah. You know, that's tough on the dating apps, too, when you're trying to have a conversation with someone for the first time and you think you're answering the, the, the statement, the paragraph, and then more comes. Yeah. And, you, and you're just getting to know them. And then you're like, oh, wait, um, that... So in regards to that, yes. In regards to that, no. You know Point what would happen to me? You know what would happen to me? Is is I would reference something in their dating profile and they won't remember that they yep. wrote it. Hate that. All the time. I made a oh, joke. I, I made a joke on a date once, Henry. I told this guy. <laughs> I, and I called the girl like basic as a joke because in her profile yeah. she had said I'm kind of basic. 
but she thought I was just insulting her on this date. I literally had to pull my phone out, show her her own profile, so she knew I wasn't insulting her. Oh my god. I don't I don't get that, man. That's not hard to remember what you wrote on your own profile. Yeah, you, know? you only write like four things. Yeah. I mean, holy shit. It's like, wow, you 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 live in a uh, in a penthouse, huh? What? I didn't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Why would you make that assumption of me? <laughs> no, it says here where it's like, where do you most like to be? My sick penthouse. <laughs> Oh, my friend wrote that. I, I thought it was changed. I don't live there anymore. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Henry. Dan. American Pie Presents Girls Rule. Now, this is a really interesting one. I'll, mm. I'll be honest with you. Because I, I really thought we had seen the backside of this franchise. Did you? Yeah, look. So we just covered this in January. Hear me out. Yeah. They yeah, made those three movies at the height of American Pie Mania. Okay? Right. Then they moved over to straight to video land. They made four of those babies. True. Okay? Yeah. Then they stopped. They made American Reunion back to theaters. Okay. I felt that with the American Reunion movie, we were saying... Those straight-to-video things, that's like a product of the aughts, and now we're back to theaters, and the American Pie movies will have the, the cast that you know and love. Okay. That's, I guess that's a fair assumption. I, it I, had I, been I, nine years since then. Oh, well, that's true. I guess that's... I, I don't know. Just for some reason, when, when I you know was told this was... Either you told me, or I had already seen the ad on Netflix, I... I wasn't at all surprised. I feel like this is just going to keep going at all. I, I didn't think about the, the, it's the theatrical it's, thing. It's only because you have, we just watched these in January, Henry. But to the pie heads out there, yeah, it's been nine years since they've had any fresh pie content. I, uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Any, I, I guess. Any warm crust. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's true. It's true. Well, I, you know, I'm glad they did it so that we could do this for everybody. Well, you know, it is uh it's an interesting choice. They they went over to Netflix. They said we're not going to be a VOD franchise anymore. We're still going to make obnoxious low budget sex comedies, but we're just going to toss them on a streamer. Yeah. And they got like a good streamer. They didn't like get like <laughs> No, they got the streamer. Yeah, they didn't get like they didn't work, they didn't go for Tubi or something. Wouldn't that be great if <laughs> uh, be if an American Pie movie came out and it was like an Epics original? See, that would be something. I would that would kind of get me slightly excited. <laughs> no man, I look. I wasn't excited to watch this, but yeah. I at least think that we're doing gender swap. Yeah, that Our, was. Something. It's yeah. something, exactly. Something. So something. Well you know what we have here, we've done a lot of gender swappage on mm. on the show. Let's go through them. Okay. We saw Danny Ocean's sister. That was That's great right. stuff. That's right. We saw those great GBs with their plasma packs and yes. they were ladies. All right? Yes, right. We checked in with our old friends, the men in black, and now they had a woman who was black. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, then, is that it? <laughs> I feel like there have been more. There have been so many. It's pretty good off the top of your head. I mean, there could have been more, man. I don't know. But, but you know, that because that wasn't a thing for a long, long time. So it wouldn't. It would stand to reason we wouldn't have that many on this particular show, but... But this, um, I think it lends itself to American Pie. When I first heard it, I instinctively thought it was a good idea because, you know, I feel like people, when Bridesmaids came out, were saying, like, wow, what a revolutionary movie. It's women doing gross stuff. Right. And I was like, ah, whatever. Women could do gross stuff. But what I didn't right. realize was, like, 
it was kind of the first time it was like a big hit that women were doing gross stuff. Uh, it was a huge hit. You're right, because, yeah, it's not the first time for sure, but, but you're right. That was like, and the whole movie was basically yeah, female. That's all they had. Yeah, and it was female-centered and all that, yeah. And then uh, Girls Trip came out a couple years later, and they were like, black women too. Yeah. They'll and piss think, all over your heads. What's that? I said they'll piss all over your heads. <laughs> that happens in that movie. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and I think it's also right. It's not just like we've had plenty of throughout the many, many years that we've had a lot of female-centered comedies, but like not a lot of just gross out, like we are just here for sex. This is a sex comedy with females being as gross as guys or you know, that kind of thing. That was down to pound. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Three D characters down to pound. Not down. just like the hot lit not not just like Heather Graham in the hangover. Right. 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 Not Leah Thompson in casual sex. <laughs> right? Can you please pronounce that title properly? Casual sex? Thank you. Boy, Victoria Jackson's butt in that movie, nice. I was so in love with her when I was I a kid, dude. She was one of my first crushes. Yeah, yeah shame about that. <laughs> she, uh, also, she went totally insane. No, no, that's what I'm talking about, mostly. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah, it joined a religious uh, thing, right? Real ultra super. Big Trumper, bro. Oh, is that right? I mean, oh, that yeah. makes sense. I didn't know. It makes sense, yeah. That's good. Good for her. All right. It's senior year at East Great Falls High <laughs> once again. And we're going to meet four friends and they get into some hijinks. I'll tell you that. They, they do. Can I ask a question right off the bat? Yeah. I don't want to give away my five star rating too, too soon, but who was your, who is the least insufferable character for you? Um,. Henry, first of all, I want to get into the stats and the director and writer and stuff, but I also want to say that I did not find the characters to be insufferable. <laughs> None of them. None of them? Uh, a little bit the the heavyset one who was obsessed with JFK. Okay. All right. But the other three were all right. Okay. This film is directed by the great Mike Elliott, Henry. Yeah. And I don't... Are you familiar with this guy? I mean, I looked at him on uh, Letterboxd, and there wasn't much to see. Well, but. there's plenty to see on IMDb, and I want to walk you through this man's um, relevant career. Okay. All right? Because we're about to talk about a man, Mike Elliott. His name might not be on the tip of your lips, Henry. No. At the tip of those luscious, wet lips. But, right. uh, <laughs> but he... <laughs> my, my luscious, wet yes, lips? Yes, or? yes, Okay, all right. But he is franchise royalty. Yeah, all right. All right, I'm all right, taking, right don't I'm look, don't it. look. All right, all right, all right. I barely looked, I just, yeah. This is a man, got his start doing porn, as they all do. Okay? <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay. As they all do. But then... Something happens in 1997. He is hired to produce a straight-to-video sequel, Henry. And what he finds is magic and a career. All right? Jeez. So the first one is Casper, A Spirited Beginning. Oh. Okay, that's the prequel to Casper. I presume you get to see him die. Um, oh, cool. But then I'm just going to go through this man's sequel credits all right all right so this guy is kind of made for our show this guy is made for our show and boy you should be taking notes all right you ready for richie right. rich's christmas wish didn't know that existed i i didn't that's right i only knew the original richie rich all right adam's family reunion a third adam's family movie all right okay tim right. curry replacing Raul okay. Julia, yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Turbulence 2, Fear of Flying, my friends. That's the Ray Liotta thing, the original, right? An incredible Ray Liotta, Lauren Holly vehicle. That's right. That's right. Okay. Beethoven's fifth. 
All right? Yeah. Time Cop 2, the Berlin decision. Didn't know that existed. <laughs> Berlin decision. All right? Does Van Damme go back in time and, like, stop the Berlin Wall from being made or something? I have no idea. It's not Van Damme. Okay. It's, it's, it's an Asian guy. All right. Oh, all right. All right. He does the American Pie Presents. All right. Listen to this. He's a producer on The Devil's Rejects, but not House of a Thousand Corpses. How is that even possible? It's like he won't do original films, only sequels. We love this man. Yeah, that's what I saw on Letterboxd. He comes up as like being part of those those Rob Zombie um, movies. You, you know? ever see The Prince and Me with Julia Stiles? You know it. Well, maybe you'd like to see The Prince and Me too. The Royal Wedding. I... <laughs> Wow. All right. You ever see War Games? Matthew Broad. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe you'd like to see the 2007 film, 2008, excuse me, War Games, The Dead Code. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Wow. All right. That's maybe you'd like nuts. to see, maybe you'd like to see Smoke and Aces 2, Assassin's Ball, because he's got a producing credit on it. Wow. Wow. Blue Crush 2, Henry. A bunch of a bunch of death race movies. A few Scorpion Kings. Honey three Dare to Dance. I didn't know there was a Honey two. I didn't know there was a Honey one. I've seen it more than once. Uh, Kindergarten <laughs> Cop two with Dolph Lundgren and Bill Bellamy. Bring it on presents worldwide hashtag Cheer Smack. That's the name of a movie. Bigger Fatter Liar. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wow. Unbroken. I'm, I'm unbroken. Man. Path to Redemption, the sequel to the Angelina Jolie film Unbroken. How We've about heard of that? Yeah. yeah. Granddaddy Daycare. How about that? Jeez. How about How High Two? Hmm. This That's the, man is that the pole vaulting movie? This man worked. It, just in the past year. He has produced Undercover Brother 2, which I didn't know existed, yeah. and Bulletproof 2, based on the Damon Wayans Adam Sandler vehicle, not featuring either actor. <laughs> you know what's, what's, what's uh, depressing slash wonderful Tell about me. this? Uh, this guy is living proof that this show can... Run forever. Yeah. I mean, that's why I mean it's 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 wonderful, but it's also kind of depressing. Like the, for us, there's literally no end in sight. Oh yeah, it's like the war in Iraq. Yeah, like we can't stop. Like there's just never gonna. We I can't stop like Miley like Cyrus. Like, sorry, I said we can't stop like Miley Cyrus. That's a classic yeah, Miley Cyrus song. Yeah. Never stop stopping. I thought that's what you were gonna say, but pop um, star, right? No, I actually, somebody asked me the other day, uh, aren't you guys ever going to run out? And I said, no, no. People no. think we will, but <laughs> but we've spent more time thinking about it. Yeah, we have. I, I don't, we, don't, we don't mean to sound arrogant, guys, but we really have. We have Bitches, done we can run for like two, three years just on the films of Mike Elliott. <laughs> yeah. No, this this show could literally go on till I'm dead in a few years, and Dan lives to at least 104. We'll see. Anyway, so this guy, he's directed a few of those movies that I mentioned, including... And this is his first pie film. Okay. All right? Yeah. He's using two writers. We've got David H. Steinberg, who he dug up, who wrote the, the American Pie Presents The Book of Love. Okay. But apparently, he's still alive. And uh, they got this other guy, Blaine... Weaver, great name, great name, and he works a lot with the uh, with the this guy. I forgot his name already. He wrote mm. a couple of the Prince and Me films. Oh, and Honey too. What is this Honey one? I I might we might I might it's, not, yeah what um it is a film about Jessica Alba as an aspiring music video dancer. Oh yeah, all now right. I can, now I can even picture the. Poster. She okay, teaches okay. dance classes at the youth center in that film as well. Okay. Yes. 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 Right. Of course. Very good movie. My my bad. It's my honestly bad. her best. Maybe movie? her best movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not the eye. What is that? Oh, that's that remake thing. I think it's a remake. Some Japanese thing. They were from... all remakes. 
Yeah, yeah. Let's true. be honest. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Holy shit, dude. I felt like all those girls in that Evil Dead remake looked like Japanese uh, remake horror. Like, all, all, anytime someone got possessed, <laughs> yeah, every time someone got possessed, they looked like the girl from The Grudge or The Ring Dude, or something. I, I never thought of that. Yeah. They were utilizing some heavy Asian makeup tools there. Yeah, yeah, weird. All right, let's go through our four lovely ladies, Henry. Mm. <laughs> all right, first up, our lead. She's sort of the Jason Biggs of the crew, I think. Yeah. All yeah, right, true. The actress's name is Madison Pettis, and she is playing an a, a character named Annie. Annie. You familiar with the actress? No. Uh, nor am I. Um, yeah, I'm looking through her creds, Hen. Yeah. And it uh, looks like she got her start on Barney and Friends, so that's interesting. <laughs> um, oh, the game plan is her big credit. She played the Rock's daughter in the game plan, bro. There you go. There all you right. go. So I thought she was all right, this Annie. We first meet her. She's got a boyfriend who's going away to college. Um, I recognize she's, she's supposed to be 17 in the movie, right? They all are, yeah. She's 22. All yeah. Right. Um, she looks young, though. I, I recognize the boyfriend, Henry, unfortunately, uh, as playing Nathan Fillion's son on the ABC police procedural, The Rookie. Wow. I kept thinking he was uh, a step cousin of James Franco. Really? I thought he looked like My that God. that kid from uh, the Kingsman's. That's fair too. I yeah. can see that he's very, very generic. Like they all kind of look like that now. Tom Holland, that guy. Yeah, they all they all look like David Spade's impression of Skeet Ulrich. Oh my God, Henry, just making jokes for like. Two people tonight. <laughs> Me and I don't even know if it's you. I mean, I know the joke you're talking about, but I can't picture yeah. it. Um, <laughs> all right. HP. All right. Yeah. So this girl, she's got the boyfriend and she wants to give him that sweet loving before yes. he goes away to college. That's right. All right. So she waits for some reason, until he is home from their date. And then she's going to sneak through his room. But he's not got an easy house to sneak into, Henry. No, it's it's a few stories. First, yeah. though, she slips on the, uh, the, the fence, gets a real big wedgie. <laughs> it's a big iron gate. Yeah. Big iron gate in those, those Michigan homes. Then she sneaks up the side of the house and she falls down a bunch she gets real dirty yeah i mean she still looks immaculate and beautiful but <laughs> right. she's dirty yeah. Yeah, but she's, she, but I we we know right. she's dirty because um when she takes her clothes off to fuck that dude he's like right. not exactly what i was picturing and i'm like right. calm down dude just whip it out <laughs> that's why you know I'm like, that scene happens and i mean that's obviously the reaction i mean i don't know i again i, I said this before with band camp and some of these i don't know sometimes who these movies are for i don't know i don't know i think they're nine for, year old no kids. it's for teens i think a teenager would even be that dumb to watch a movie like that and not have the thought you just expressed where the, she comes out this like goddess. She's got like a figure. But I think you're supposed to think that way because he turns out to be a bad guy cheater True. who's getting a beach from an Asian at college. Yeah. By the way, what's with all these these uh, beach uh, dental dam beaches? I have a big question about that, Henry, because. I, I... I don't want to live in that world. We don't live in that world. I don't think this world ever existed. This girl busts out flat out a dental dam, sticks it in her mouth, and is like ready to go down on this dude. Has a girl ever, certainly not dental dam, I mean, the closest I've come, I had like one girl one time put a condom on my dick for a blowjob. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that a question for me? Yeah, have you? I mean, no. never. Not even a condom. No. No. 
Hookers aside, that's different. How many hookers have you been with? Like three in Atlantic City. Is that true? No. Are you? Yeah, that's true. You I know don't that. know. <laughs> I don't know you before I knew you. Maybe you did. <laughs> you spent some weird times in Atlantic City without I, me. I definitely had some awesome times in Atlantic City, but uh, no. No, no, never slept with a prostitute. And no, the answer is no to that. So, but you know, what do I know? I, hey, maybe the, this is a thing. I right into the won't... podcast. If you have ever required a woman to use a dental dam, had a woman bust one out on you, um, if you yourself have been like, let me use one, right. let me know. Yeah, no judgy, no judgy. Go ahead. You know, no, I'll judge a little bit. Okay, I will too. But you know, I just want to put that caveat there. Um, All right. Yeah, so, so strange. Ultimately, what's going to happen is the four girls are going to make a pact. So as we go through the characters, I'll say what their pact item was. Okay. All right, and they have to get it. That these all done by morp. Yeah. All right. That's Which the backwards clever. prom where the girls ask out the boys. You can't call it a Sadie Hawkins dance anymore. Apparently. Yeah, it's uh, it's like Nilbog. It's prom backwards. Oh, yeah, it's like Nilbog. <laughs> Listeners, uh, check out our troll coverage. That's right. All right. Then, who's next? Oh, wait, her thing is she wants to bone the man she loves. Right. That's so, right. you know, her, his parents walk in on her with his dick in her dental dam, and even her parents are on, like, a Zoom. I mean, right. the grandparents. That's very That's fun. right. They don't know that it's a, a Zoom call. The grandparents think they're on TV. and Yeah, because they're old. Right. It's very funny when she swallows the dental dam, too. Yeah. yeah. In, all, in all seriousness, this was my least favorite sequence of the entire movie. Like, I was really out on this movie instantly. Like, oh, it's a piece of shit. One star. Um, right. And uh, they kind of got me back a little bit down the line of ways. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I can tell they, they didn't get you. <laughs> Look, there were you know what what was happening? It's funny. If the whole if the whole movie wasn't so overwrought, overplayed and overacted, there were some chuckles here and there. Like I even saw glimpses in some of the actresses where I was like, that could have been a funny line. Like, the way that was delivered. Like, some of the lines that aren't supposed to be the punchline at all, I actually thought were kind of funny. But they're not what you're supposed to laugh at because they didn't think they'd get that big a laugh. So, like, some of their reactions that were more subtle, they were funnier. But those aren't... It was so uh, choreographed. Yeah. That it was just so obvious. It's like, none of this stuff is funny that you're... Stri- I don't know. The that, worst that, example of that, I thought, was... Um, the the girl we were just talking about, Annie, at one point, she, like, her dad is, like, a single dad who's, like, oh. really down to pound. And yeah. across the street was, like, this hot new MILF who's also the principal of the school, played by Sarah Rue. Uh, you know Sarah Rue? I don't, but I figured you would. I knew she was probably somebody from TV. She used to be a fat actress, and her um, her roles have gotten smaller along with her waistline. Um, really? Yeah. Oh. So, a rare case of that. So, hmm. anyway, th- the, the scene I want to talk about is when she walks in on them, like, making out on the couch. Yeah. And they just have lipstick all over each other's faces. And then yeah. there's, like, a really important scene right after that where he, like, has to go up to her bedroom and, like, give her, like, a dad-daughter talk. But he yep. still has makeup all over his face <clears throat> from the scene before. And it's, like, in my head, I'm trying to justify it. Well, like, yeah, I guess he wouldn't have had time to wipe off the makeup. But then I, I came to my senses and I was like, well, you didn't really need to have that scene where they were attacking each other's faces right before this scene either. Right, like, you could right, have cut right. that out entirely or, you know, had it take place in the realm of fucking reality right. where she's, like, straddling him or something rather than licking his face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, in, like, with a better director and and less over-the-top shit, like, I actually, in that sequence when they're he's talking to his daughter... Like, I, I don't know why, but it, like, occurred to me, like, in, like, maybe a comedy, like, Fletch or something of that, like, 
he would like it wouldn't be quite as extreme with the lipstick but if they did want to keep it on his head and the dialogue was toned down like when he goes to kiss his daughter on the head or is like leaning into her then she has lipstick on her head from his lipstick and nobody acknowledges it cut scene like that type of stuff like throwaways that are just like nothings but if they would have done that in this movie it would have been like zoom <laughs> lipstick on the daughter and then she would have been like <laughs> you know it's just like you know it's just i don't know where these these guys learn comedy it's just so bizarre like they don't have any art artistry well a lot of the actors did like got their starts in sitcoms on like disney channel and nickelodeon and it's you can super tell. apparent in their performances yes. i mean they go through that training and that's yep. the way they think comedy is done you're right. Very, uh, a very uh, expressive and theatrical. Theatrical night at the improv, like improv groups. Whenever you go, whenever you've been dragged to see friends who are insistent you see their improv troupe. Thankfully, that hasn't happened to me since the late '90s. But God, it's terrible. All right, and that's part of the reason for sure. Let's talk about the love of my life, Liz Broadway. Uh, amazing name. Who plays the new Stifler, Henry? Steph- Love your life. Oh, I was very enamored of her. In the movie? <laughs> yes. No, all right. Now, this is very funny you said this. Very funny, and I have to tell you right off the bat, very unexpected, Daniel. Uh-huh. Because she was mine, too. Yeah. But I wouldn't have thought that because she could have been, like, maybe a generic carbon copy cardboard blonde but she isn't you know why i think beautiful and very i mean i don't want to say very funny but she pulls off she's all right i just think henry the other ones we've talked about this on we love kids movies a little bit me and shut up tim and i think she has it Oh, you've seen. So you've seen <laughs> so wait a minute. But no, I, I i've seen her like just pop up in like guest roles but like this is the first like significant role i've seen her have And, like, I only wanted her to be on screen. She's got the chops. The other three, that's what I was going to say, and I thought you were going to give me shit. Um, uh, She's got chops. She plays down, ironically, she plays down what is usually in these movies the most ridiculous role. And maybe that's because she plays it kind of like Sean William Scott a little bit. But she all all that that the role... All the role ultimately needs, I think, is to to be played max overconfidence. Just like it, it has right. to be someone who thinks that anything they set out to do, they're gonna fucking kick ass at. That's true. She just exudes that without any effort. Yeah, totally, and like without being a shithead. Like no, that's true too. Like she actually has like a couple of things where like you think are gonna turn into big drama in the movie, and then it just like turns on a dime where she's like. Oh, she's my friend. Go f- <laughs> date her. <laughs> That's yeah, great. You know, I, I thought that some of that stuff with her was funny. Like, I didn't know if they'd be able to pull off a female stifler. But, of course, they should be able to because it's like that was one of the things I was thinking about in the movie that I did. I did like was that, like, I, I assume, you know, the supposition going in is like, well, you know, are women as can they be as dirty as guys? And I'm just like, well, if you're a fucking idiot, you think that they're not? I mean, of course they are. The, Pretty the fucking is, dirty movie. No, it is. So my point is, it's like, if it's going to ref- ref- reflect real life and how women can be uh, as, as much as guys are, then it should be like that. But it was just like, did they pull that off? And it's just like, I, I, I don't think they... They did, but a lot of that was because well, of the ridiculous situations they're in. And, and Henry, Henry, they didn't pull off what you're saying. I think what they did pull off was they took the American Pie Presents bullshit VOD formula and they gender swapped it. And I thought this was better than any of the the other ones. I'll take this over Bandcamp, Naked Mile, Book of Love, Beta House. Yeah, God, they were all so bad. They were all so bad, dude. And, like, this is a thing where, like, if they announced, like, American Pie Presents Girls Rule 2, and it's, like, a version of American Pie 2, where it's, like, the summer after college or whatever, I'd watch that. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, we'd have to. If we had to, you'd watch No, no, but I'd watch it anyway. Like, for the first time, I'm introduced to a cast in one of these movies that I wouldn't mind seeing in other movies. See, I'd like to see her. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, I mean, and, and even even uh, Annie, she she's okay. Yeah. But she's not like, funny, but she's okay. No, no, not at all. Um, but the Kayla... What about and... Kayla? There's nothing wrong with... Wait, wait hang on. So the Stifler one, her her pact thing is right. that she wants to be with a nice guy. Got a good guy, yeah. Yeah, because right. she's always like, you know, she's a Stifler. She's fucking everyone. Well, right. she's not actually, whatever. It, it's complicated. We also never hear what relation she is. I thought that might happen. I believe, uh, I believe, um, like, either niece or daughter Okay. Did and I I, I only say that because she referred to Barry Bostwick's character as Pappy. All right. No, but but, Aunt, but that's the Annie's boyfriend's Barry no. Bostwick. What are you Barry talking Bo- about? The Barry Bostwick's the guy who plays the old guy Peepaw in the phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's the grandfather of Annie's college boyfriend. No relation to Stifler. Oh, really? I got confused. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm thinking of Christopher McDonald in those movies. Okay. Anyway. Yes, that's Stifler's dad, yeah. right? All right, then I have no fucking idea, and who cares? Well, I, I, it would have been funny to hear just calling somebody stifler it's like well okay what how, how is this it would have been nice they couldn't get sh- sws to come in like maybe although it wouldn't make sense i was gonna say it's like her dad but like he, I, in 2011 I mean, he didn't have a fucking kid i was just gonna say i don't know what he's doing these days but he's probably not gonna come into a netflix american we know what movie, he's doing know. man we just saw that goon movie great stuff it was okay all right. Right. Piper Kurda is the actress who plays Kayla. She's an attractive, maybe mixed race, half Asian girl. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. I thought so as well. Uh, but I, uh, unlike you, also thought she was kind of funny. Uh, her- she, had, she had some of those reactive moments that I thought were funny if they were play- if so- if an acting coach would have just come in and been like, that reaction you're going where you're like, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Just tone that down a little bit. She's, pull back. She's big. Yeah, she's big, right. Like, pull back. All of them, if they just pulled back, it would make a big difference. It's overbearing. But, you know, maybe you have to blame the director on that. The director's well, in am. charge of the tone of the movie. Right. No, no, no. I, I mean, the, 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 the performances are consistently too big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but Stifler manages to not be. She's very chill for a Stifler. She's like very, very like uh, demure for someone who should be, who's supposed to be so big, and and she fucking pulls that off. As well, the she made a choice to do that, and you have to respect that choice. All yeah. right. So this Kayla girl, she is dating a fella named uh, Tim, <laughs> and. Uh, she, oh, I didn't finish the other girl. Anyway, whatever. Kayla is um <laughs> not the Godfather. We don't have to go. Through I know, I know. K- Kayla uh, wants to get this boyfriend back. She like went through his phone a bunch of times, uh, which is a shitty move. And she, I've never the- had anyone do that to me. I've had many people do that to me. She's broken up with, and she wants to get him back. So she like pretends that they want to be fuck buddies. But she has to like lure him back into a relationship, right? But also, she may want to fuck this new kid, Grant, that everybody else wants to fuck too, right? Okay, right. so Mr. back, Mister Squint, Squinting yeah, all the time. back to Stifler Lady. She wants to bone this Grant as well because he seems like a quote unquote nice guy. So she enlists his friend Emmett to help. Emmett right. is the titular wimpy kid in Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and he is going to give her the deets on Grant to help her fuck him. Meanwhile, they were friends in elementary school. She goes over his house. What's this? He's got a framed picture of her in his bedroom. Excuse me? 
<laughs> that was believable, sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Sure. So, first of all, do you remember the fun story with me and this Diary of a Wimpy Kid boy? Vaguely. Refresh me and our listeners. Um, I was, of course, drunk at Barnes & Noble once, and we had installed a large cardboard cutout of the Wimpy Kid. <laughs> And I went up to everyone, and I was like, look at that girl over there. She's cute. I'm fucking into it. And I was literally talking about a cardboard cutout of a little boy. <laughs> uh, who constructed that cardboard cutout? Aaron Farinelli? Because he was always the one putting it. It might have been. Together. Yeah, maybe yeah. him and Josh Coffey or something. Oh my god. Alright, so <laughs> that was something that happened to me once. So, But anyway, of course, they end up together. Because he defends her honor at the at the Morp party. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. The, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kayla does get the, her boyfriend to fuck her a lot. They fuck constantly in this movie. There's no nudity in this movie, though. There should have been. None. There should have been dicks. If you're gonna gender swap, yeah. go all the way with it. Yeah. Every time characters are having sex, which is a lot yeah. in this movie, they're always wearing tops. And it's always the it girl on top. I feel like this is this this movie is teaching men to be lazy in sex. Men, you gotta get up there on top. You gotta do some missionary, fellas. You gotta do the work. Put put the e in the effort. Even go behind there. Whatever. You need to do. <laughs> and you know what? While you're back there, reach around, buddy. No. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's a goddamn common courtesy. It is. Now Natasha Benham is a Persian actress. I don't know why I feel the need to say the race of everybody. Uh, yeah, well, I think that because she's Persian, that that was cool. Like I liked that they actually had that. I mean, if it it you're looking at the movie, you're going, oh, we got quite a lot of representation here. That's a fair because point. Kay Thanks, Henry. Yeah, I mean, Kayla's Asian. She has a black boyfriend. Annie is. I don't know. I thought she was black. Is Annie mixed race? Would uh, biracial? Yeah, yeah, biracial. I would say either half Latina or half black. I mean, they all tend to like white guys besides the the, uh, the Asian Kayla. Guy. Yeah, Kayla. But I thought it was cool they had a, a Persian actress. I mean, you don't see that, like, ever, you know? And so that was kind of cool. I'm just sorry it was such a stupid character, but, you know, at least she liked JFK. Yeah, I was wondering how you thought about that. What, is, that attract, is that attractive to you, somebody who masturbates with a dildo made up to look like JFK? <clears throat> I thought that the well, first of all, you're gonna you're gonna be amazed that I know this reference, but I did watch a couple episodes of um, what's the fucking British show that everybody loves with the girl, the woman. I, in I, it? I you you were right. I am amazed that you're getting this reference. You, uh, Fleabag. Okay. She masturbates to Barack Obama's speeches. <laughs> right? You remember that? I haven't seen Fleabag. Oh, you never watched it? Yeah. Oh, well, this is, she masturbates to Obama giving space. It's very funny. It's a funny thing. But she's not using a dildo with Obama. See, I, so again, Well, at first, she point. is just masturbating to a JFK speech. That alone would have been enough and would have gotten a chuckle. But no, they have to get a... I mean, it's just... She's I going. Thought, she's going after. Funny, she, yeah, yes. She's going after that Grant kid at first, too. But then she gets into this... Dude, who's like, um, he does a great JFK impression that turns her on. It's not a good impression, either. It's not good. I was actually shocked. They couldn't find a kid who does a good impression? It's not the hardest impression to do. I don't do a good one, but and I love the guy. Do you know who this, who this actor was? No. Probably from Community. No, check this out. Wilmer Valderrama's nephew. I don't know who that is. Um, hello, he played Fez on that 70s show. No, goodbye, I never watched it. Um, what do you mean? Yeah, that 70s show, never watched yeah, it. Yeah, but, but like, you know Wilmer Valderrama, right? 
I don't. I don't know, man. He was a popular star. He, there's even a reference to him in Knocked Up, where he's 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 trying to get a beer at the bar, and he says, "You're gonna be upset when you find out that I'm Wilmer Valderrama." God, I don't remember that joke, and mm-hmm. if it did happen, I probably even on my tenth viewing didn't know what it meant. You did ask me though if I thought that would be attractive if a girl yes. did that. That is cool. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, I'm glad you were willing to admit that. Because no, I was going to call I, you out if you weren't. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. I, I once, I, I knew a girl who who loved watching Bobby Kennedy speeches, and we would have hit it off, except she had kind of a problem with uh, a lot of substances. I could see myself J-O-ing to an AOC speech at some point. She's, uh, she's something else. <laughs> she's a, she's a wonderful, uh, person she's a very crushable individual oh my god yeah you know i love you ever see her boyfriend no i don't think i have it's like a big ginger guy does that make you think like oh you like ginger guys and i'm better looking well i'm way better looking than him first of all and uh (laughs) although i'm not i'm not fully ginger I well, that's true. That's misleading oh. people to describe you as ginger. I'm not. I'm really more brown, brown hair guy. But in the no, summer, but, you get some ginger in your beard. Yeah, yeah. It's browning the older I get. I have it's, noticed that you were much more uh, bright eye than bushy ginger when I first met you. I'm certainly not bright eyed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Uh, any yeah. any scenes or or storylines we have not touched upon or actors that you'd like to discuss? I mean, I, I you know she gets it's very it's very follows very much so the American Pie formula. So I mean, it it was like towards the last twenty minutes, it did become more unwatchable for me just because you, you they set it all up and it kind of it almost has an ending that it it should have ended like you realize you realize obviously 25 minutes into the movie who everyone's going to end up with and then when they all come to the kind of conclusion that they they realize they're all going to do it it felt like an add-on to do the more and do all these like separate and it was just felt like really obligatory and like you know it it did i really felt like in a lot of cases we were actually trying to mirror the original american pie movie with this absolutely so yeah yeah, at the morp they play like don't you forget about me and shit not necessary like the party at stifler's house would have been a perfect time to end the movie they all find who they like she punches out the guy Kayla make makes up with the guy you know you, I did sort of like the last shot of the movie of them all enjoying being fucked in a in a split screen there's a lot of that going on yeah yeah, yeah. Did you watch the credits with the yeah you did, they were dancing up a storm mm-hmm did you yeah. get this to the stinger no and I I, I watched quite a few of them because I was I, at that point I went on my phone and was doing some stuff, so I just let it run. But I don't think I made it to the end. What there was, was the st- there was a stinger, my friend. It's Danny Trejo, the janitor of the school, who we see twice in the movie, it has no lines. He walks in on the principal having, like, uh, S&M sex during the morp. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Is she, is she having it with the dad? Uh, I gotta be honest, uh, all the men in this movie look the same, hard to tell them apart. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He looked like, a, the dad in this looked like a, looked like a Scott Bakula. He did. They could have, they should have gotten Bakula. What's he doing? Why not? He's around, I see him. Major League Five? Oh, we'd be covering it. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, alright. Any other actors you'd like to talk about? I mean, I thought that most of the men were pretty bad, honestly. I mean, the girls... My LVP is a man, for sure. Mine, mine is, too. Who is it? Um, uh, Grant. Me, too. All right, let's talk about him, then. All yeah. right, this guy, Darren Barnett. He's, yeah. he's a really very crucial character in the movie because at some point, all four girls are kind of into him. 
Like, it's half-hearted with the heavy-set Persian girl. She gets the least to do in the movie because she's heavy-set. Um, and so, like, she never really has much to do with him. But, like, there's that Kayla girl. She's buying him coffees to make her boyfriend right. jealous. Right. Um, Stifler knocks him in the head with a lacrosse thing, which is actually pretty funny. I, I agree. That yeah. was funny. Yeah. And uh, And then... And the Annie girl is super into him, but wants to make sure she fucks her boyfriend. So she, like, went up to go visit him at college. Like, I gotta get this shit out of my system. I'm gonna fuck this dude. Right. And uh, he is up there getting a beach uh, by a girl with a dental dam. Another one. Yeah, yeah. another one. And so she leaves. <laughs> Maybe it's just this boyfriend. Maybe he pulls his Maybe junk out. Maybe he insists out. on dental dam. Well, either he insists on it or he pulls his junk out and it's just like syphilitic written or something. You know, it's like written with syphilis. And, and so the girls are just like, well, all right, but I'm using a dental dam. Yeah, I guess so. You know, he could have like an Al, Al Capone thing going on down there. You know, a lot oh. of crabs. Jesus. Well. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like uh, <laughs> like a John Merrick situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a man. Okay. Um. So that kid sucks. I I agree. He's the LVP. Oh, one thing I wanted to tell you. I was having fun with IMDb earlier, and a lot of the actors in this movie have very fun upcoming credits. Oh. Uh, All right. So all right. I would like to point your attention to Madison Pettis, who plays she Annie. Is- is definitely going to be this. I'm just throwing this out there. Whether this is what you're going to read or not, I uh-huh. didn't read anything. She is definitely going to be a scream queen of low budget horror movies. There's well, no doubt in my mind. Well, her next film's a rom com, and I will say it is another gender swapped film, Henry. Oh? Yeah, that's right. She is the star of the upcoming film, He's All That. <sighs> All right, so we'll okay. be covering that. That's great stuff. Uh, okay. Stifler, I think, had a good one too. Let me see. Upcoming projects. Oh yeah, she. <laughs> okay, she is going to star in an alien invasion skateboarding film, written and directed by Tom DeLonge, the guy from Blink One Eighty Two who quit Blink One Eighty Two to find the truth about alien life. That's real, right? That's real. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's a that's an original reason to not be in a band anymore. I haven't heard that one. It's exciting stuff. Da- well, Dan Aykroyd? Oh, okay. And oh, good point. The, what band was he in? I guess. Now, I also just want to say that uh, the, <laughs> the, the Persian girl will be starring in a film called Cupid for Christmas. Aww. Which is directed by the writer of this film. Now, you may think that she's Cupid. You'd be wrong. Mm. Cupid will be played by Richard Kind. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. Richard Kind, if he's not in Curb Your Enthusiasm or a Coen Brothers movie. Mad um, about you? Like I said, <laughs> I... I uh, I'm fine. Yeah. All right. Well, what a masterpiece this film was. Um, what do you give it? Oh, wait. Can we also talk about how uh, Annie finally does fuck Grant? And they sure. set up like a. Uh, it's like a tent on the football field for them Very to elaborate. fuck in. Very elaborate. And yeah. they put up on the on the big the jumbotron or whatever. Go shuck that oyster. Because that's an ongoing phrase in this film. They like to refer to losing your virginity as shucking your oyster. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the kids are talking about these days, man. Yeah. They're, made, they're making old pirate seaman <laughs> tugboat captain references. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. I give it a two. You give it a one? Yes. All right. Who's it's... your... Your, our MVPs are Stephanie Stifler, a.k.a. Lizzie Broadway, or whatever the fuck her name is. That's right. And uh, the LVP is Darren Barnett, a.k.a. Yeah. Grant. We're What's sticking with it. 
Same things. I was not going to. Exp- I did not expect that, especially the MVP. I thought maybe LVP you'd go Grant, but he was a clear winner in my in my. I mean, he's the fucking male lead of the movie. Were you disappointed just... there weren't more references? Like there were references. I, there were like a couple of quotes from American Pie movies. But were you bummed? Like no Eugene Levy, no oh. Shermanator. I was fine with that. I mean, I, I, I didn't, you know, I, it's clearly trying to do its own thing with just using the names of one character and then the title. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't disappointed. I certainly wasn't disappointed to not see G- Eugene Levy. I'm good. After that run we had where he was just fucking being stuffed into those movies as, as like a curtain rod. I don't need to fucking. Yeah. No. Remember when Fuck. he judged that like. Oh, <laughs> what t-shirt contest or whatever it was. God. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. <laughs> was a better watch than those. Now that you got me thinking Thank about that you. shit. Yeah, this was wild. all right. Mm. 